um, just based on what we're seeing in the crypto sector. And again, I think there are more black swan events out there that will likely come to light. Hello everyone, today our guest is Gareth Soloway. In this video, Gareth Soloway reveals why he is scared right now with regards to the crypto and Bitcoin market. He also dives deep into the macro outlook, a must watch. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Bitcoin investors are withdrawing funds from exchanges at a rate not seen since April 2021, with nearly $3 billion in Bitcoin withdrawn over the past seven days. New data from on-chain analytics firm Glassnode shows the number of wallets receiving BTC from exchange addresses hit almost 90,000 on November 9. Amid ongoing turmoil over the bankruptcy of major exchange FTX, Concerns have heightened among exchange users over security of funds. Commentators have upped advice to avoid custodial wallets and take control of crypto assets, and regulators are increasing scrutiny of the crypto industry in mass. On-chain figures suggest that a large number of hodlers have opted for non-custodial wallets over the past week. The number of withdrawing addresses saw a huge spike on November 9, this surpassing the daily highs for both May and June this year when BTC price action last saw significant downside pressure. The number of withdrawing addresses saw a huge spike on November 9, this surpassing the daily highs for both May and June this year when BTC price action last saw significant downside pressure. For November 12, the latest date for which data is available, withdrawing addresses still totaled over 70,000. When I say nibbling a little, it's important to recognize that, you know, and I, I'm sure Magic would agree with this, is that, you know, I, there's plenty of levels I bought that I thought were going to be great levels, and the market said, nope, and it went right through. And yeah. so by nibbling, you give yourself that opportunity to trade around the position a little bit, right? So so I always think about, do I want to put a quarter of what I want in, a fifth, the fourth, you know, a third, and then I give myself that ability. Once you commit all your capital, there's no trading around that position. You're done. Yeah. You're just riding that. And so as a good trader, you want to always be able to maneuver. I look at technical levels and I say to myself, okay, there's a 70% chance of a bounce here. So I'm going to commit X amount of capital. That means 30% chance it's going to break. So then I look for the next level. If it breaks, I buy more there. And ultimately when you have 70% odds, you know, I, maybe not the first time, but the second time you should get that technical bounce at one of those times you will. And you can ultimately at least make a small amount on the trade. So the trading psychology is important. Um, one of the things I love talking about is the discipline, the mental discipline of a trader is so important. And then understanding the psychology of market to understand greed and fear and how to not get swept up in greed and fear, but also how to use it to your advantage, right? So when you see this kind of blood in the streets, people panicking, and you're starting to hit major technical levels, that's where you start to nibble with the technicals and the psychology of the market. So just kind of cool stuff, you know, across the board. Looking at the chart, and I can pop up my chart real quick, but um, basically it was a scenario where the chart was telling us we were going to go down, right? You had this classic bearish channel going on here especially off of this most recent dump in June. And so it was just a matter of when it was going to break down. And it's the amazing stuff about it is, you know, the bearish chart, then, you know, you don't know what it's going to be. In this case, it was this black swan event with FTX. But the problem here is that you now have a breakdown of kind of this trend line that marks the low pivots all across here. And so if we can't recapture it in the next day or two, I would be really concerned that this is the next wave of selling that takes us down 12, 13, 14,000 area. Now we got to 15 and change. Um, I was a little surprised we didn't pierce 15. Sometimes they like to pierce those even numbers, trigger stops before a bounce. But um, I think the Fed kind of saved it. Well, not the Fed, the CPI number saved the day. It helped get bullish sentiment on there. Um, the one thing I'd like to point out though, is that even with Bitcoin's move, it still comparatively to the stock market didn't outperform that much. The NASDAQ was up 7% on the day. That, that happens once every 10 years in the NASDAQ. It today was not a once every 10 years type epic move up in crypto. Um, so I think we have to also kind of take that into account. And there's just a lot of damage done in, in crypto. I mean, we, we thought we got through it with Terra Luna. And now you have another issue here where the mismanagement of client funds is involved. 
and, and it just begs to, to ask for, I hate to say this, but we need rules for crypto. We need transparency in these companies. Um, otherwise, I fear that, you know, and again, I wonder how many more things out there are are going on that we aren't aware of. And I think as the market goes lower, and I do expect it to overall go lower, I think we're going to see it. Um, I'm going to take you guys all the way back on my chart to 2018, right? So here we go. All right. So basically, look at look at this low here, which was the beginning of this quiet period, right? This low began in basically, well, really, it's over here in June, right? So here was your low, you got this bounce, a little bit of chop, and then it went to sleep. And remember, crypto went to sleep over the last like two weeks. It was super even three weeks, it was super, super quiet. And then look at what happened in 2018. You had this dump, kind of pause and then this is basically where the final flush came in we lost 50 percent on bitcoin okay so again remember june and where did the dump start in november all right now let's spin ahead here to the current price action and what we can see is in june again just in 2022 that's when the low is put in you got kind of those same early bounces here and then we went to sleep and then we dumped out. So it's it's amazing. June to November in 2018, and then the dump. June to November in in this six segment, and then the dump. And again, I wonder if this is kind of that final move lower that could take us down 50 percent, like in 2018, which would basically put Bitcoin around 10,000, would maybe mark a low pivot. So just kind of some cool stuff there. You know, I, for for the last year plus, I've been saying we need regulation, and I know that's kind of like taboo in in the crypto markets, but but like, like Magic said, if, if we want big money to get involved and you want Bitcoin to go to 100,000 to 500,000, you have to get big money involved. And, and again, these, these funds, these pension funds, all these things, they have this fiduciary responsibility to only invest in things where they do their due diligence, they can quantify the risk. And when you don't have transparency and like anything like that, they just can't do it. And, and you know, if you got these big players involved, Bitcoin would soar. I mean, you know, just imagine them putting like 1% of all their assets and, you know, trillions of dollars into Bitcoin and we're all rich, right? So, I mean, some people look at it as a, you know, as like, oh, don't get involved. We don't want regulation. We don't want the government to control it. I'm from the investor side, right? I've been, always been a trader and investor in my life. I'm like, I kind of want to know if something's a fraud so I don't lose all my money, right? I mean, like, let's do yeah. this. Let's get it in there so we can all make money on the way up. And I think that's what we need. And I agree that the, the low will be probably put in right around when that regulation comes out. And basically what we see is, is again, you broke this lower thing. And like he said, and like we talked about earlier, you have to recapture this area here. I really want to see a, like a weekly close back above the low from June, which was around 17,600, give or take a little bit. Um, my guess is it's not going to do it. Um, just based on what we're seeing in the crypto sector. And again, I think there are more black swan events out there that will likely come to light and uh, it's going to freak people out. It makes them very cautious about buying down here. Um, having said that, I think I think for me, again, the 12, 13,000 area here, um, if I put in a trend line, I'll show you guys what I'm looking at. So I think this is your next major support area right in here. And you can see it's this pivot high and then there's this little blip right over here as well. And before it broke out, and that was really the breakout that started around 12.5 is the, what took us all the way up to that 65,000 on that first high up. Now, one of the things I liked that Magic said was that basically you can see here, if you go back to 2017 before that run and you take a line and you connect it through the lows in 2018. So the cycle lows prior to the 2017 point the aftermarket lows from 2018 after that cycle high, it connects right through the COVID low right here. And that gives us right around 8,000, 7,800, kind of right around that 7,500 level. So, so I do think if 12 and 13 area breaks, that's your next likely target. Um, and it makes a lot of sense considering the, the uncertainty in crypto, the fact that, I mean, you look at the stock market and, and I really tie crypto in with the stock market a lot because it's a fear factor, right? So if the stock market goes lower, and I do believe it will go lower in 2023, it's likely to take crypto down. And I think we have to always remember that, you know, this is the first cycle with no Federal Reserve stimulus and at least for now and even if they pause hiking rates they're not going to go to lowering rates until inflation is substantially lower or the economy is essentially in a depression and they have no other choice 
And so what that does is it potentially prolongs the bear market longer than previous bear markets, which were like 12, 18 months. And I think, again, we could be in a two year plus bear market before we finally get those lows on the positive side. Um, I'm just looking to accumulate Bitcoin. I'm really not going to any of the, the alts, uh, maybe Ethereum. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of hodl a little bit, but we know that Bitcoin is that commodity per Gary Gensler. So it kind of gives me a little clarity on the regulation for that. And uh, and I guess want to I just want to stay with best of breed at this point. So as it comes lower, I'm just basically putting a little bit of money to work every, you know, every twenty five hundred three thousand dollar lows from this point on. And I'm just going to kind of tuck that away as I do think we will eventually get that bull run. I do think Bitcoin eventually becomes more of a gold scenario where it does well in uncertainty and, and the scarcity aspect, I think, does really, really help. Like you go back to the 1980s and, and I'm sure we've all seen the movie Wolf of Wall Street, but basically oh, yeah. that to me was like what's going on now in crypto, unregulated, just pump and dumps and, and this hype and everything like that. And I'm sure there'll be a movie in 20 years about, you know, maybe maybe San Bankman Freed, right? I mean, who knows? But but then yeah, you yeah. go to like periods where and, and by the way, all of it always shows in bear markets, right? In a bear in a bull market, you know, um, Bernie Madoff would have never been discovered. It was that it was in 2008, 2009 when the markets crashed and people started pulling their money. Um, but then you go to like WorldCom and Enron and like, I mean, it's just there over and over again. What we see is that these and you can see my cat crawling around spooking everyone there. But um, but everyone in, in these periods, you can just you just have to understand that that shady stuff does occur and it's just more reason to not commit 100 percent of their capital. I mean, to to. It, anyone who had all their money in FTX, I mean, you just can't do that. You can't do it in Bitcoin even. You can't put it all in Bitcoin even because you just don't know the future. Forecasting how the current scenario may play out, Michael Van de Poppy, founder and CEO of trading firm 8, meanwhile said that the worst was likely not yet over. Probably we'll have more issues with exchanges coming weeks, but probably also a ton of gossip. If you enjoy this highlight videos, Please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.